Before we begin, don't forget to follow me on Twitter at Dolany TV and on Instagram at Tyson Dolany. You guys want to make sure you see what's going on behind the scenes here on Dolany TV. That's where to find it. Let's get going. This is Dolany TV, and guys, I apologize. A busy past couple of days in the life here. Well, not here in Crossfield, here down in Cold Lake, of course. If you're happy enough to see me at the rink, you know I was happy enough to see you. Either which way, we get back to the Edmonton Oilers franchise mode today. And we start off in the AHL because there's a couple of things I mentioned in the last episode. Right at the end of the last episode, I was starting to question Ethan Bear. Uh, what do we do with him? Do we send him down, try and get his offensive game back up where it was like before we even started the simulation the year previous, right? Four points in 11 games, or do we try and what do we do? So Caleb Jones will remain down in the AHL. What I'm going to do to try and upstart his offensive production is pair him with our big old prospect, Evan Bouchard, right? Big guy. Peyton Krebs kind of taking over that standard, but that's all right. Two goals out of Caleb Jones, so we'll see what they can do. That being said, on the special teams, Eurobeck Bouchard, Jones on the second unit. We're going to move Jones up with Bouchard and see what they can do to generate that offense on the big power play. Trennan's going to be up there. Actually, Malone's not doing too well. Maximov, 14 points. Trennan's had 21, right? Like, we're not going to discredit Trennan at this point, that's for sure. Starting lineups look pretty damn good. Egenberger, Gambardella, Trennan, that's kind of what we've been rocking all year. Egenberger having a fantastic year, and he's up to a 75 overall. Big thing you need to be aware of, Artem Ovechkin slots in for the first time all year. Just we want to get more of a scouting report on him. And defensively as well, Brett Crowder, our American pick with that low elite potential, is coming in. Big question I have for him, what's his defensive awareness, right? That's what we need to figure out in the NHL. Obviously, Ethan Bear sticks up. He's going to play with Oscar Kleffball. Why? Because I want to see what he can do. Starting lineups are going to be pretty much similar, except for what we've done is kind of reshuffled everything right, left, right, right? Bjorkstrand, who has put up 24 points so far this season on only the third line. He's only played the third line this year. We're giving him a shot on the top line. Pugliarv, he's put up 27. He's played well with dry saddle. Johansson's put up 34, so we're happy with him. And Kyler Yamamoto's put up 33, so we'll move him down to the third line. See if he can't spark Kajula, who's put up 14, and Strom, who's put up 17, right? Dynamic scoring. We already had that as an episode for sure. So defensively, everything looks good. Special teams, dry settle, Pooley, RV, McDavid. Yamamoto on the first power play unit with Clefbaum, and then Nuge with Bear, Johansson, Strom, and Bjorkstrand on the second. I think that's really going to help us. So we're going to get five games in. I'll show you kind of the stats I'm looking for out of these boys. And then we'll see what we get going. Dry settle leading the way with 35 points in 37 games. He was a point above at one point this season, so that was pretty promising, but unfortunately it didn't stay that way. So two division foes, and then we hopefully take some big Ws. 5-0 win. There you go. That's a huge one. 4-2 loss. That's a tough one to rebound from. And of course we lose the next one. 2-0. Just the losing has just been a tough part this year. 5-3 win, right? We go win big and then lose big, right? 5-4, not a bad one. But all of a sudden, we're 21, 20, and 2. That's a tough pill to swallow. Dry Saddle continues to do his thing. We're in the fifth spot in the Pacific Division. 41 points in 43 games played. Johansson with 40. Yamamoto with 37. So he's been good. What, McDavid? Eh, not bad. Leading the team in goals. Nuge with 34. Pugliarvi. Bjorkstrand up to 29, right? Now Bjorkstrand getting it done. Strom with 20. Kajula gets two more points. Like things are kind of turning around for this team. And Ethan Bear now with one point still. Minus four. It's just been tough, boys. It's just been tough. And goaltending wise, looks like our goalie's kind of got rocked a little bit. Yeah. You see Corpusalo, he's he's a 500 goalie. We can't really count on him to win us a lot of games, but we're hoping he does, right? That's kind of the point of signing him. And we're allowing. How many goals against? 2.53. So we have a 3.35 spread. That's not as bad as I think. Best power play in the Pacific Division. We're lethal. But the problem is our penalty kill is still suffering. Second worst in the Pacific Division. We need to get back up into that high numbers. But it's been a, been a tough year. We've only been time shorthanded. Look at this. 87 times. By far the least in the division. 
And you see only a couple of teams have less goals against than us. So it's deceptive numbers. 78% is a very, very deceptive number. Let's go double check how our boys down there in the AHL are doing. That's what we kind of signed up for this episode, right? The farm report. And down there you see Eggenberger ends up putting up 29 points in 32 games. Good on him. McLeod, Maxim, Maximov, and how's Artem Ovechkin? Ooh. Ooh, there you go, Artem. He's fully scouted at an AHL top six forward. I don't believe that. I don't buy that for a second. He gets some good poise going to him. I think he can grow pretty quick, pretty fast. Seventh round pick, of course, you can't expect too much. But I think he's going to be a very, very solid player down in the AHL for us. And Crowder, 48 overall. Low elite potential. This kid's going to be good. Minus two, 16 minutes time on ice. So we got to let him just... Uh, just develop away and get Keegan Lowe back in there. You get Kulovich or somebody else. You know what? Let's give Salzer the time and see what Salzer can do for us. He's low top four. So we got some very good picks in the sixth round there with Salzer. So we'll see what he can do. And we'll let things continue along as we go into, what is this, game 48-50 for us this season. We'll see where we sit at the 50 game mark. So Dallas, Montreal, Calgary, Detroit. Florida, let's go up to this game against Vegas. That's going to be a huge game, so we need to figure out what's going on there. 3-0 loss. We're just getting shut out a bunch this season, but we still have a lot of goal scoring. That's for sure. 3-1 loss, another one goal game. 6-5. There's the offense all of a sudden returning, right? Dal or Detroit beats us 2-1. 4-2 loss, and we are just getting hammered on by teams we should not really not be losing to realistically. I mean, yeah, sure, Detroit's pretty good. We beat Calgary in a shootout, that's for sure. I don't know what to figure out about this. We're three points back of fourth, five points back of third in the playoff spot, so it's been tough. We are having a weird season, that's for sure. So I think, you know what, what you do, Nuge with 36 points, but Dry Settle, you know he's having the season he's having. So let's click it. Seriously, get it clicking. McDavid only 37 points, that's going to be a problem. 30 points for Bjorkstrand, so let's move Bjorkstrand down and get Yamamoto, who's had 40 points up, and see what that does with Drysaddle, McDavid, and Yamo on the top line. What a top line. Bear, he's had two goals, one assist. He's been good, but he is struggling mightily on the back end. You see Nurse is still pairing away, so we'll get him with Larson. See what Bear can do. I think I like it. I think I like it a lot. We'll see what these line combinations can do. We're not giving up as many goals as you'd think. Right? That's been the question. Not as many goals as possible. We could be losing a lot worse, right? You look 3 0, 3 1, 2 1, 4 2. Yeah, sure, we've had some shaky goaltending, but I'm going to make of it what I will and I'm not going to be too concerned about it. Vegas, what do you got for us? Well, Johansson, a fourth, and Zach Cassian for two second rounders. Johansson's way too valuable. We got to decline that trade, that's for sure. 3-2 win, okay, the top line probably helped there. Go to view, draft class, see what we get. Still don't have the top guys scouted, that's for sure. Alexis Lafreniere, we know he is fully scouted overall this year. Scholes, we don't have him scouted. Medium Elite in Fritch. Gamble, fully scouted. Deschamps, looking good. And a couple guys still not fully scouted. I wanna see who I've got perfectly scouted out at this point of the season who I've got for elite potentials. You see Danielson still looking really good. I, I like him. I like this kid a lot. So we're going to go to player info. And I can't scout him from here. So we'll just pin him. Uh, Lafreniere, Frisch, Gamble, Primo, um, Mashney. We'll, we'll watch list him. Anyone else we really have to watch list. How about Molmstrom, Erickson? We can watch list him. And I think that pretty much nails off everything we need to know about these guys but you see they're moving up the draft board pretty quickly we maybe need to watch a couple of these guys and they're falling so it's a tough call right and jacob is looking really good gems or busts who's in here for gems malden he's looking good at well look at him low top six forward 83 overall scout rank but we've got a er, census rank we've got him 73 that's not a bad pickup right so we might have some guys to pick up later in this draft let's get these couple of games over with 5-3 win back to 500 that's huge and we've scored eight goals in the past two games that's massive against carolina need to keep the win streak going we do five nothing victory 
That top line is probably scoring a bunch of goals. 4-3, I can take that. I can stomach that. That's all right. Division opponent in the Canucks need to win four of five on this. Johansson for a second? I don't think so. Ottawa, that's a terrible trade. And let's go one more. Make it the tiebreaker and hopefully get a victory here against Vancouver. 4-1. There we go. The goal scoring suddenly returns. We're looking good. Looking great. Leon Dreisaitl, 50 points. He's putting up the numbers, that's for sure. So let's take a look quickly through the stats. Yamamoto up with 49. Holy cripes, this kid is just having a season to behold. Plus 11, he is just coming to play hockey, that's for sure. And then you've got Johansson with 48, McDavid 45, Nuge with 40. Then you got Pugliarvi, Bjorkstrand with 34, Strom 26. Like, things are looking good for this team all around. Darnell Nurse up to 13 points. Kara Ethan Bear now with four, so he's definitely picked up his socks, that's for sure. Larson and everybody else that's benched not doing anything, so not a good season, for sure. Goaltending wise, let's take a look. Corpusalo 22 and 22. Goaltending's been pretty much 500 right across the board. It's a tough year, really weird year. And how about Skinner? He has been a 10, 11, and 6 goalie. And Stanley Ronning's been, oh, he's been awful, absolutely awful for us. So I think you ought to get Day Dylan Wells back in there and hope he does something right. We were just testing him out. I didn't mean to let him go that many games. Nando Egenberger up to a 79 overall. Oh, crap, boys. I think we've got ourselves a new entry to the lineup. That's for sure. Nando Egenberger ready to come up at 20 years old. This guy developed quickly. Yakov Trenin still developing slowly. Everybody else just taking their time, right? Taking their time. Maximov and anyone else we need to be aware of. Of course, Artem Ovechkin. Hold on. Hold the phone on him. Five goals on the fourth line, guys. Thank you so much for tuning in. I'm Tyson. This has been Dolan TV. I will catch you guys in the next one.